Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. We have a bunch of topics to dive into on the PS5, but one big one here for the PS4 just to start off with, and that is of course the new version of Gold 10. There is a beta, a public beta that is currently available right now. You can join the Gold 10 Discord to be able to download the file for it. And this update provides a huge number of additional firmwares that are now supported with this version of Gold 10, which is version 2.4 B18.5. This particular version now has support from basically 5.05, 5.07, 6.71 and 6.72, along with all 7.x, 8.x, 9.x, 10.x, 11.x, which includes of course 11.02, 11.50 and 11.52 now supported with Gold 10, and of course 12.0 and 12.02 that were already supported. All of those firmwares are now supported with this current public beta. Now at the moment, the public beta is like a limited time. It's only accessible right now for 30 minutes, but it will likely end up in a full release fairly soon. Now probably the reason for the public beta is that with all of these additional firmwares now being added, we need a lot of people who are, you know, on all of these different firmwares to actually test it to see you know, if there are any problems on certain firmwares with it not working correctly or certain features not working, crashes, instability issues, that kind of stuff all needs to be worked out. And that is of course the purpose of these kinds of public beta tests. So give it a try on all of those different firmwares. If you're on an obscure firmware that now should have support for Gold 10, definitely give this a try because we have so many new firmwares that are now supported which is fantastic. There's also been some new features added in this new version, three new features. The first one is an improvement to the bin loader that runs on port 9090 that's now able to load elf files as well as bin files. There's also a time played option, game stats option now available. So if you go to any of your applications or games and press options and go to information, you will now see a time played at the top as well as game starts. So it counts the amount of time that you've spent on that application. Uh, since running Gold 10, and it also counts the number of game starts as well. So the number of times you've launched the application is now counted. So you've got game stats now showing up there as well. And the other feature, of course, in the Gold 10 settings is the date and time option. So if we go in here, you can update the date and time via the internet. You just select that option and it updates it using google.com. You can also change it if you're offline to a fake date of the 1st of January 2025. So if you can't sync online because you're keeping your console offline, you can instead just use that date instead, which is better than if your clock has been reset back to 1970, which happens if the CMOS battery dies in your PS4 and it's not able to keep the clock synced when power is cut to the console. Then whenever you reboot, it will reset the clock back to 1970. Now, as far as I'm aware, this is not a permanent fix for the kernel clock. The kernel clock, if it has been unsynced, this does not actually resync it properly. But what it does do is that, that it's a workaround so that typically what you had to do before, if you were wanting the correct date and time, is that you'd have to go into the settings, to the date and time settings, and then enter the correct date and time. But then every time you reboot the console, if your CMOS battery had died, even if you've replaced it, if it died previously and you've replaced it with a working CMOS battery, it will still continuously reset back to 1970 every time you reboot the console because it's not been properly synced with PSN and there's no way to sync it with PSN right now if you're on an older firmware because you need to be on the latest firmware to do that. So instead what this does is it just basically does the same thing that you would do setting the clock manually. Instead it can just do it online through the Google link instead and it will set it for you so that you don't have to manually type it in every time you reboot the console if your clock is constantly being reset. Plus you can also enable a auto update to the date and time on Gold 10 startup so that you don't have to come into this menu and update the date and time every time you reboot the system. It will just automatically run it as soon as you load Gold 10. So that's another handy feature that has been included in there for people who are having trouble with their clocks being reset due to a dead CMOS battery. So yeah, that is another handy feature that's been added there. But we may have to wait for the full release to get rid of this um, time limit that we have at the moment for the public beta. But again, that just might be the particular build that I downloaded at the time. Maybe there'll be other builds in the public beta that come out that do not have this time limit. And obviously once the full release comes out or the full beta gets posted, uh, it will no longer have that time limit applied. Okay, so moving on to some PS5 news now. We got this new $10,000 HackerOne report on PlayStation's HackerOne bug bounty program from Slidey Bat. 
So, unfortunately, I did, wasn't planning on covering this originally because, of course, if the report's not from the flow, it's probably not going to get disclosed. We can see another report from Slidey Bat that was 10 months old that was also $10,000 and still has not been made public. So that's why I normally don't kind of cover these particular things if it's not from the flow. However, the reason I'm covering it here is that there has been a lot of talk about this because of a post from Zeko who said strong advice for those of you who are on firmwares between 10.20 and 11.60, pair your drive and wait, basically telling people to update to 11.60 on a PS5 if you're waiting for a new jailbreak. He's saying if you basically have a console that does not have a paired disk drive, then you're not able to use any user land exploits at the moment because the only one that you have access to is the Lua exploit and the Lua exploit requires either you being on the latest firmware to get the demos or you having a paired disk drive so that you can get a physical disk version of the game that you can run in your console. And if you don't have that, then you have no way of actually running any future jailbreaks, any future kernel exploits that come out for the PS5. And that is the problem. So he's suggesting you just update. However, this was based on the idea that Slidey Bat's report is actually a kernel exploit that works up to 11.60 and will be patched in the upcoming 12.0 update that's currently in beta on the PS5 right now. However, that is not the case, as of course Slidey Bat later clarified, saying that it's a bug that he reported almost a year ago and was fixed months ago. They just took forever to actually close slash pay out, so nothing that would be interesting for new firmwares. Sorry to disappoint, it was likely patched before 11.60. So maybe not such a drastic need to update to 11.60 to pay your disk drive, although Zeko is still recommending it here saying that uh, Slidey Bat's bug was patched before 12.0 or even 11.60, but he still thinks people should update to pair their drives before it's too late. And it is a bit of a dilemma if you are in that situation, if you don't have a paired disk drive. Obviously, this does not apply to people who do have paired disk drives, but if you do not have a paired disk drive in your console, you're kind of in a kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't situation at the moment. It really depends whether or not a new WebKit exploit comes out first or if a new kernel exploit for 11.60 or higher comes out first. I think a new WebKit exploit or some kind of new user land exploit that doesn't require the disk drive is probably more likely to happen than a new kernel exploit on 11.60 or higher, but we just don't know for sure at the moment. So we can't really say one way or the other what the best option is here. You know, because normally we say stay on as low a firmware as possible. And that's great because new kernel exploits might come out for 10.60, 10.40, 11.0. And if you update to 11.60, you would lose access to those. But then if we don't have a WebKit exploit that comes out that you can then use to load those new kernel exploits that might come out on higher firmwares, then you're kind of screwed unless you have a paired disk drive you can use to trigger it with the Lua exploit instead. So that's kind of where the dilemma goes. Do you update to 11.60 just so that you can get the Lua exploit going? And at the same time, you can also download things like the Lua game demos and Okage Shadow King for the Master Core exploit and get your console all ready with all of the user land exploits set up that you can potentially use for any new kernel exploits that come out in the future. Otherwise, you just stay on as low a firmware as possible and hope that a WebKit exploit comes out sometime soon that will then allow you to load any future jailbreaks using that instead. So that is pretty much the dilemma that some people are in if you do not have a paired disk drive. So next we have Lightning Mods who appears to be considering open sourcing ETA Hen in the next update. He says to like this tweet if you want to see a community driven version of open source homebrew enabler. And this would essentially allow a lot more developers to jump in and start working on ETA Hen to get to a point where we will hopefully see more updates happen for ETA Hen more frequently, more features being added, that kind of thing. So if you want to support that, then go ahead and like that tweet if you want to see ETA Hen get open sourced. So that is something that uh, Lightning Mods appears to be considering quite seriously here. Okay, so moving on from that, we do have some other projects to talk about here. So we have this PS5 DLC toolchain from Gadu or G-U-D-U-I. So basically, this is designed to make it easier to patch your PS4 DLC because currently on the PS5, there's a problem with fake package DLCs your fake package PS4 games and PS4 fake package updates will install and run no problem on a jailbreakable PS5, but for some reason the DLC content does not. So any DLC packages you install, fake packages, 
uh, you can install them but when you run the game the content that dlc content will not actually appear and will not be accessible in game so we have to use idosos's dlc patcher to actually patch the dlc into the update file and that allows it to work and that works for most uh, dlc content for most ps4 games However, it is a bit of an involved process. So this particular tool is designed to make it a little bit easier to use. All you really need to do is run the application and then give it the location of your fake package patch file and then the fake package base file. So the base package, the game package file. And then finally, any DLC packages that you want to add, you then select that as the third option, all of the DLC that you want to pack inside the update file and then simply let it run. It will decrypt the executables and then patch them with the DLC patcher to load the DLC, repackage the update back into a package file that you can then install onto the game, uh, which will then include all of the DLC as well as that update all included there. So that is pretty much how this works. It just makes it a lot easier because Idosauce's original version required a few more extra steps that you had to do manually that this tool kind of automates now which makes it a lot easier. Just pick the game and the patch package and then any DLC you want to add and it kind of handles the rest for you. Okay, so our final PS5 topic here is of course the Lapscore project from D-Link Turtle, which aims to take the old Mastercore exploit that could be used to take the PlayStation 2 emulation in the PS5 and PS4, of course. And there's a game in there, Okage Shadow King, which has a save game exploit that could then be used to kind of break out of the emulator and use it to actually sideload other PlayStation 2 games. That's what Mastercore on its own was capable of. But now, of course, D-Link Turtle is trying to combine this exploit and use it as a user land exploit to then trigger the Laps kernel exploit. So that means if you have the game Okage Shadow King, which unfortunately is a digital only title that you would have had to have already purchased and licensed on your console before you took it offline and stayed on an older firmware, but, you know, if you were around in 2023, when I was originally covering the Mastercore exploit, you might happen to have a copy of this game, a working copy on your console. If you have a retail copy of this game, you might be able to use it soon to actually trigger the jailbreak. And the main updates on this is that it's now got kernel arbitrary read write added. And we actually got a screenshot from D-Link Turtle himself with the caption of soon TM and showing the PP pwned notification on the PS4 which would seem to indicate that he's actually got the exploit up and running here on the PS4, at least to the point of being able to actually, you know, get kernel access and, and get notifications going, which means th that it's pretty much in the final stage at this point. So hopefully we might see a release coming fairly soon here. So that is the updates there. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.